Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It is Joe here with Best Living and today we are getting right into my bedroom summer makeover. I know it's been a minute. It took us a minute to get everything together, everything refreshed and done, but I'm happy to share with you today everything we were able to do on a budget to get our room refreshed for the summer. So without further ado, let's get right into the refresh. So first thing first is the bedding, which is primarily to me the most important part because you're gonna be using it. It's the most aesthetically pleasing. You're gonna notice it first when you enter into your space. I knew that when I was coming time to refresh that I wanted something that was very relaxing, calming, easy on the senses. So you'll see a lot of creams, greens, blues, a touch of pink for a little bit of femininity. Um, but overall, it's a collective space that really is inviting and really introduces us to sleep and slumber. It's very important for my husband and I that we keep our bedroom as a place of fun, number one. But also number two is to keep it for a place that we can kind of come back and recollect ourselves and revitalize. Having a space to retreat to together, to be one together, is paramount for me and for us. So through us going through this process together of selecting frames and photos and lamps and such that really helped build in and build out the retreat we wanted to be a place of rest and renewal that's exactly what we were able to accomplish with our updates so again the coverlet is what really helped set the stage for grounding the room for me if you think little princess the movie growing up uh, if you think things like English tea or high tea, things that are kind of more refined and delicate, that's really the style that I had in mind for our bedroom. The coverlet long one did is what kind of set the tone for the room. And then sourcing the duvet in the same green color was just, I mean, serendipitous. I mean, how could you not get it, right? And then moving on to my custom shams. One way to elevate any room is through a monogram. I love a monogram. I am all things Southern. And a monogram for me is just the icing on the cake. It's that final touch. It's the final cake topper uh, to just set the tone for your space. And I will say that the Euro sham that I have is from my home currently. I did not buy those for this project. They were originally sourced from my daughter's room who has more than enough Euro shams on her bed. And I thought, I think I could upcycle and recycle what I already have for my space in my bedroom. And wouldn't you know, the color palette just plays beautifully together. So don't be afraid to shop your own home for items that you would need for a certain project you're doing in the present. So the second area of our room we're gonna talk about is our lighting. Now, we are still waiting on a chandelier. I have not purchased one yet because I just haven't. I haven't found anything I really love. They are expensive. Lighting can be very expensive depending upon where you're getting it from. And I wanna make sure that the piece that I do source, no matter where it is from, fits my style and aesthetic for something that is more so timeless and classic versus kind of trendy and for right now. We focus primarily on our nightstand lightings and the lightings that we'll have up front on our dresser. So as you'll see here, we did switch out our original side table lamps for these ones I got from HomeGood, but they suit the bill for elevating our space, but still keeping it kind of funky, but classic at the same time. I do like how the white kind of picks up and brightens up our space. The shade drums offer a more modern touch and spin, and then it nicely reflects off the mirrors that we have. So again, lighting is really important. It can really help set the mood, set the tone for what you're doing, but also offer in an added layer of decor. Think about lighting as you would your earrings. The linens is what you would adorn your whole body with, and the merchandising is the accessories, which is our decor, which is our next step or next phase in our bedroom refresh. So decor is really the accessories that we have. It's adorning as you would your body with a necklace or some earrings or rings. It's really the pieces 
that you can bring in that speak to your personality. They can be trendy. They can be things that are on spot for now or more collected. A lot of the things that I decorate with in my home have been passed down to me either from my husband's side or my side. And those pieces are very, very dear to my heart. Um, so I like to decorate with those in certain spaces and other spaces, you know, it may be more clean. So you'll see here again on our bedside table, one opportunity to decorate. I have it layered with a coffee table book, a photo a ring stand that I got from Pottery Barn uh, many moons ago. But this just helps to elevate the space. It grounds a space for my rings, making my rings decor. At the very bottom of our nightstand, you'll see a little basket on both sides. And these baskets just store miscellaneous items. On my side, it's a way for me to hide my items I need for filming for YouTube. Whereas my husband's side is very empty. We just use that for my daughter to play, but it gives symmetry and balance to the room. Our nightstands are from Ballard Designs. I really do love them. And looking at our dresser, which is right under our TV, I have this decorated with coffee table books. I love a good coffee table book. They are great for decor pieces. They are great for inspiration. And they're great just to read about the history and the artistry of how each particular artist or interior designer or brand interprets interior design. So on our dresser, this is a vintage, I think it's a Drexel Omega dresser. These were manufactured back in the 1950s and 60s, that whole grand millennial type energy, which I am here for. I absolutely love it. So this dresser dates back to there. I bought it off Facebook Marketplace, another area or vendor that I shop a lot is Facebook Marketplace. Different people are selling things all the time. I really think that having photos around in any space, but primarily also a bedroom, helps you recenter your why. Um, why you need to rest, why you need to be rejuvenated. So I can serve these people with my family as well as myself. So I know I said there were three things I focus on primarily, which is the bed, which is the bed itself, and the linens, the lighting, and decor. But I want to talk about one last thing, and that is scent. Smell and scent. This is one of the most underrated opportunities you have for design. If you've ever walked into a model home or gone to a show house, one of the first things I myself realized is, man, it smells so good in here. What scent are you using in this house? The sense of smell is very powerful, right? It can recall a whole lot of memories based off one scent. So I'm not saying you have to have a signature scent, but I am saying you do want your bedroom and your home in general to smell inviting, clean, all those things. So one of my favorite items, the linen spray in a room spray. So my favorite linen spray uh, comes from Target and it's from the brand Castelluna and it's in the flavor reflection. I know it's not a flavor, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, it says that it's with lavender and cashmere to welcome stillness. And I love that description of welcoming in stillness because that is exactly the focus of our bedroom is to usher in the spirit of rest, of stillness, so that one, we can replenish so we can be of, of renewed bodies so that we can be of service to God and of man. Just make sure that whatever you find kind of fits the bill for what emotion you're trying to invoke in this space. So that, my friends, is all I have for you today. I really do appreciate you spending time with me. I do hope that you were able to glean something from today's video together, some information about decor, design, Again, this, I am not an interior designer by trade, but I am one for my home, right? We all wear that hat for our house. And I want you to feel empowered to do what you feel is best. It is so easy to look on Instagram and social media and see that everybody has like these perfectly manicured homes and things. And I love that for those people. But don't let that stop you from doing what you can in your home for what God has given you. It's like the parable of talents, right? The one who gave five, the 
the one who gave three, no, gave two, and the one who gave one. And it's up to us to use what's in our hands to multiply, right? We don't go and hide in the ground because we don't have. We use what we have and say, God, I thank you for this. I offer it up to you to multiply, to make more. So I hope that you felt that today. Again, I believe design is so much fun, but it can be overwhelming and it can be expensive. So make sure that you're making decisions based off of what you love and you like, but also being fiscally responsible so that you aren't getting yourself into things, you know, you don't need to because you're trying to buy something that may not be your taste, but everyone else has it. No one lives in your house but you and your family. So what works best for you is what works best for you. But anyway, that's my rant. I love you guys so much. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And as always, remember that you are seen, you are loved, and you are chosen of the Most High. And I will see you back here Sunday at 6 o'clock. Bye, y'all.